hurt, bro. I hurt. I hurt. I hurt, bro. All right. Like, for real, bro. Like, you don't know, bro. Like, I hurt. Like, like it, but, it, but it ain't got nothing to do with it. It ain't, it ain't the sleepless nights. It ain't the sleepless night, bro. It ain't, it ain't the fucking uh, having to watch my mother deteriorate before my very eyes. It's the idea that I don't have the motherfuckers who I always admired and loved the most. Like, I don't have them right here with me. Fighting this battle with me, I'm fighting this bitch by myself. All right, and you always told me like your brother was like your superhero. He was my hero, bro. For real. And it's disappointing that you ain't even got him. Yeah, and that's what killed me the most. But you know, shit. What they say? And you have beef in the crowd because like it's really fucked up. Because like, um, like I said, so you see you being so close to your family, and it's heartbreaking. Like. Yeah. You already dealing with your mama not knowing you like on a daily basis, and like you literally just sitting here like struggling so so bad and so hard, bro. And like it hurt me because I do I feel like I try to check on you like like hard as I can. Like I tell my friends today, I say I check I check on Terry often just because I know he ain't got nobody and he really up here like literally by himself. So I say I literally try because I don't want to lose no good friend. I said Terry got my back. More than people I know, like my whole, like some of my family material got my back harder than anybody, and I said break my heart every day that I cannot help him like I like he need. So I said he got so much shit going on. Like you saying you losing jobs, man. Like I know how hard you work for everything, and it, you don't deserve none of this shit. You yeah. don't. So it really like like fuck with me bad that you try your hardest like to be like the best dad, like the best son. Like I, I commend you, man. You deserve every flower. On this earth, man, because I, I just, I, I can't even believe that your family is like let you just suffer and talk, like talking so negatively about you, and that's supposed to be your blood. So I just, it just, it's like baffling to me, and I, I hate that you going through this shit for real. Yeah. Um. So I was called a narcissist by two people in my family, right? Mm -hmm. um, they said that I was a narcissist. Uh, one, well, one said I was exhibiting narcissistic behavior in the moment, but the other one just flat out called me a narcissist, right? Mm -hmm. And with that being said, I want to give you the definition of a narcissist. So a narcissist is someone who has uh, extreme self-involvement to a degree that it makes a person ignore the needs of those around them. Now, I can forgive them for that, right? I can forgive them for making that statement or that they're giving me this fucking diagnosis. I can forgive <laughs> them for it because narcissism and gaslighting, those are two things that have been very popular on social media or whatever, right? Uh, it's been made popular. So the thing about ignorance and stupidity, right? We'll say ignorance and stupidity. Ignorance is not knowing but doing. Stupidity is, is knowing but still doing, right. right? And this was a case of ignorance in this case, right? And... I want to tell you something about me. I've had my mother up until this point, 260 days. I've been a caregiver for my mother. Mm -hmm. To this date of this podcast, I've had her 260 days. During that time, I fix her breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Mm -hmm. I clothe her. I bathe her. I lotion her. I do everything because she can't do, she pretty much can't do a lot by herself. Right. At least not with, with like accuracy or in, in, in good faith. I, I do everything for, I've missed job opportunities for her, right? Mm -hmm. I've I've um, had to take off from work to go take her to doctor's appointments. I've pretty much put my mother and of course my son here at the forefront. And right. sometimes more so my mother than even my son. So I don't have any time for myself. I've lost her, bro. I'm losing hair. That's a reality. I don't, and I got to be here, bro. I can't lose my hair. <laughs> like, I've, so my question to you is, like, does, does that sound like a narcissist? To me, not at all. Because, I mean, you are doing the most selfless act that I've seen by far anybody could do. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, so on your journey, like, what's been the hardest part so far for you? I'm going to tell you, the hardest part about me being, a caregiver for my mother, right, mm -hmm. has been having to face the reality that under no circumstances will I be surrounded around love in this. Mm -hmm. Like, my idea of what this should be is love from all of my loved ones and be immersed in love. And it's just love, just pure love, just not even from a financial standpoint, just mm -hmm. giving the time, giving the, the peace of mind, giving the motivation, just be immersed in love in this moment, but having to face the reality that that's never going to be a thing. As a matter of fact, it's going to be the opposite of that. 
is going to be, I'm going to be made into a villain. I'm going to be made into a person who won't cooperate. I'm going to be made into like this, this fucked up person who's, who's not doing what he's supposed to do, reporting back to us, doing this, doing that. When the reality is some days going through this stuff, TJ, I'm suffering so much. that it's like, I feel like I can't come up for air. All right. And, and when I say suffering, I mean that, I mean that in a way of, by way of spiritual, mental, physical, because spiritually, I'm, I'm questioning the, the creator, right. right? Mentally, I'm 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 fucked up. Not because I'm having to take care of my mother, but because I have to basically rationalize with the idea that that my mother doesn't know me. She right. look me right in my face and don't know who the fuck I am, right? She look at my son. She she doesn't know who I am. I'm just some nigga around here for her, right? And 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 like it's killing me emotionally, bro. I cry all the time, at least twice a week three times a week I'm crying because of, of all of this shit it's a big fucking mess bro and it's fucked up and you ain't got no type of support at all I say in the beginning like I did have like I was paying for a caregiver and out of the five brothers myself included it makes five um uh one of them would two of them was sporadically sending like money to help with the caregiver to come out when I say sporadic I mean like they wouldn't consistently send like the, the money that I needed every week It'll be like two, three weeks in, they'll send it, All right. you know, which led to me having to pay out of pocket myself mm -hmm. for the times that they wasn't sending. Uh, I did have one, and oddly enough, that one is the one who I'll never forgive. And I'll get to, we'll get to that later in the show, of course, but I did have one who cons who consistently sent me money and helped out for sure. But, I mean, after that ended because, you know, you got two that's sporadically sending here and there, but you have one that's consistently sending, you got me it was a lot of weeks that I had to come out of pocket, like three hundred and sixty dollars for somebody right. that I couldn't, I couldn't keep that up. So, you know, I mean, so does like do that make you look at your family like differently now? Like you feel like you can't even lean on them for the simple things, like like you say, you just be needing time, so you can't even depend on them for that much either. So I tell you this: in the beginning, as a child, I put my family on such a high pedestal, right? Because right. in my mind, through my my ch the child eyes. I see my family as a unit. Mm -hmm. It's together. And me and my, my cousin Dre, we just had a conversation about this the other day. Me, Dre, and Fred Dre. It's like, I think that we were blinded as kids because we didn't know no better. We only we only looked at it through the lens of children mm -hmm. amongst each other because each other, we stuck together. Right. Right. We loved each other. We were raised together. But if you look back and you think on moments, oh, I do remember cuz talking on the phone about the other cousin, and auntie right. talking about the other. Oh, that was fucked up that she handled that that way with right. that. And then you start bringing back all these memories and be like, oh, wow, wait, we've been fucked up, mm. right? It's been an issue. It's been a lot of bullshit going on in the family. But a lot of that shit, you know, the destruction of my family, in my opinion, came from, um, it started when my grandmother passed away, mm -hmm. right? It started when my grandmother passed away. You kind of see, you know, my father spread apart a little bit. But then my mother kind of held it together. She was still cooking on the holidays. Everybody would meet up at my house out at Oak Hill on the holidays and they would eat at my mother's table. I watched this woman do so much for so many people. Bro. Right. I watched her um, take care of generations, two, three generations of people, right? I watched her when this one went to jail, she put money on her phone, on, on, on the phone. I watched her during Christmas time send people stuff in jail, like all the jail shit, because you know a lot of my family <laughs> go to jail. Motherfuckers go to jail. <laughs> I sit and watched her, like, you know, send cards and help pay for bail or help do this, help pay for a lawyer or whatever, or this one license got suspended, she helped this one get them back. I right. sit and watched her do that. But then I watched her do other things too, right? I watched her feed all of them. I watched them, her take care of kids for free, for nothing. And I, and I just, not just more recent, like throughout time, all the time she took care of kids, you know, and, and helped out. I watched her um, put, take out loans. I watched her take out loans uh, and, and help people with loans. I watched her put bills in her name. I watched her co-sign on cars, right? Whole cars. I watched her her do that. I watched her just be a fucking force for our family. Right. Like, I watched her like just be that for the family. And when she needed motherfuckers the most, nobody was there to help her. For real, for real, in like, my opinion. So none of these people that she's helped out that much in her life has even been an ounce of support? So I say this, it's been support, right? But it's been like my aunt looked out for her in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, we paid my aunt to look out for her, you know? But she looked out for her in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And she helped out 
But even that was rooted in like, I love my aunt, right? I right. love her to death. I love her to death. But there are things that I've heard her say about my mother to other people. And when I say other people, that can be other family members. That can be uh, just whoever will listen. Right. And I'm, I forgive her. I forgive her. I'm saying this out of forgiveness, not out of like, fuck her. I'm saying this out of forgiveness. Right. I forgive her because... I know what she was dealing with in the moment now that I'm having to deal with it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. She never had to deal with it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. She was only there probably about four or five hours a day. Okay. Right? But but I know what she had to deal with in dealing with my mother, the behaviors, her mama cussing her out, mama doing all of that shit, all right. whatever. They come with Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. I know what she had to deal with, but I still can't like wrap my head around the fact that you like would speak so ill about her in moments like that. And that 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 hurt me. That made me look at a lot of shit differently. You know what I mean? As far as like your family aspect, right? Yeah, as far as the family. So to answer your question, like, was it help? Yeah, it was help. Maybe. Like, what do you call help for real? Like, it was, it was help from her. It was help from another aunt. Another aunt came by, but then she ended up saying she couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, which I get it. But, you know, with the force that my mama has been for my family, you would think she was like the grandma of right. the family. A new before. matriarch, basically. Yeah, a matriarch of the family, like. The force that she was for the family, you would think like it would be constant people out there checking up on her, making sure she's right. good and bathing her, making sure she's straight, but it wasn't. So since you like became like the primary caregiver for her, like I mean, how is that like affecting you like like mentally? Like are you are you feel like it's getting worse, better, or like at a standstill? Bro, when I first got my mama down here, I cried for three days straight. Like, I'm gonna tell you why I cried for three days straight, bro. It was because I said, there's no way that my mother should have ever been in that house by herself. Right. Bro, like, there's no way she should have ever been in that house at any moment by herself being out of this condition. Mm -hmm. And that shit fucked me up. It fucked me up, bro. Like, I cried for three days straight knowing that she was there confused like that. Because dementia is an ugly disease, bro. It's fucked up. Yeah. Like, Alzheimer's, it's, it's an ugly disease. Losing your memory, losing your brain. It's ugly. And... It's like, it's no telling what went on in the moments of her in the house. You know, it, it, it's crazy to even think about. It's, it's, it, it hurts me to think about what could have happened. Right. But the things that we'll never know what actually happened with her being in that house by herself, bro, that shit, like, that shit broke my heart. So it's like, as far as, like, your other brothers, like, where were they the whole time this was, like, transpiring? Like, as she was slowly declining, were, were they even an ounce of help to her? Um, you... Uh, they was, I had one that, that, you know, was back and forth living there. But with him, see, he an odd case because, like, he really, he was saying he he wasn't really living there. He was back and forth or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But he wasn't present like how he was supposed to be, in my opinion. I feel like, you know, your mama there, you know what's going on. You need to be there. All right. You know, uh, I was up here, of course. My other brother was out in Atlanta. My other brother lived out in Mississippi. The other one lived out in Jackson. He would stop by here and there, too. Mm -hmm. But... Bro, nobody was doing what they were supposed to do, bro. Mind you, I'm I'm the baby, baby. Like I'm all of them. I have a brother that's 21 years older than me, my oldest brother. The one after that is 19 years older than me. The one after that is 15 years older than me, and the one after that is 12 years older than me. So they're like significant, significantly older than than me, right? Mm -hmm. So the expectation at any moment is for them to just be like, you know, dive in. Right. That was my expectation, and like I told you, like, is one brother, even now, right? Is one brother, the one that's closest to me in age. I'll never forgive him. I never forgive him. Me and him had an argument. And I won't lie to TJ, it's gonna make you mad. I call him F word. Like I did. I call him F word and I won't the only reason I'm not saying it now is because YouTube will demonetize it. <laughs> so it's not out of fear, but it's like I did because but that wasn't an attack on his sexuality again. It was an attack on his character. All right. And I'll tell you what I mean when I say that. So one of our brothers, I won't even say which one, was mishandling the money. Miss, he was over mama money and he was mishandling the money. Okay. Now the reason why I know that he was mishandling the money, right, is because um, it was brought to my attention by the brother that's closest to me in age. Mm -hmm. He was like, hey, have you checked mama account? This is the conversation between me. I said, no, I, why would I check mama account? He's like, just look at it like she has no money in there. There's something going on with her account. Like I don't know if somebody done hacked her account or what. Whole time he knowing what's going on, but he just kind of like 
feed me a little bit. So I'm like, I go and check it. I'm like, yeah, it's ATM transactions for this much. It's this for this much. It's this for this much. And she should have this much. You know, mm-hmm. the numbers ain't numbering, right? And he brought that to my attention and he agreed. He was like, yeah, I didn't want to say it, but I think that this is going on with our other brothers mishandling the money or whatever right. the case may be, right? And I say to him, like, we got to do something about this. You know, that's me. Right. I'm in your face. <laughs> like, that's me. I'm a, I'm a boy when it comes to that type of shit. Like, no, nah, we're going to address this. We ain't yeah. got to, like, kill each other or nothing, but we got to address this. It's got to be something that's made made a world so this shit can stop effective immediately or mm-hmm. whatever. And I made mention of it. I said, like, hey, we don't need to be mishandling mama money in that way. And, of course, he got upset. You know, he got upset and he responded to me <laughs> aggressively, of course. But me being me, I'm like, you know, like, I talk to you when I see you type shit. Like, right. if we don't cuss at each other, bro, like, let's cuss at each other in our, in, in, in our face. Like, you old. You my elder. I respect you. Right. Like, to me, like, you really are our elder. Like, if anything, I'm not even really trying to get, like, aggressive with you and fight you. I'm more so, like, disappointed with you. I'm fucked up with you exactly. right now. Like, you you the one. You the one that I look I look up to all them motherfuckers. I don't know why. I look up to all of them. Mm-hmm. I love all of their ass dearly. Even now. Even the one that I don't don't like, I'll never like him again. Me and him don't ever have to talk anymore. That's the truth. I mean that. That's not me speaking out of emotion because I'm way over my emotions now. I mean that when I say that me and him can never. We don't have to talk again. Because I don't like his character. I don't think he's a good person. But back to the story. When I addressed it in a group message or whatever, because this was going on in a group message, when I addressed it, like, we don't need to be spending my own money like that. That brother that brought this to my attention, who I'll never like again, Mm -hmm. picked up the phone. (laughs) What's wrong with y'all, dude? Right? Have to feed you the information. Have to feed me the information. You playing dumb right now. You know exactly what's going on. But he's speaking to a situation of us going back and forth with each other. One, why is that funny? Two, you should be a fucking brother in the moment and step up and say something and right. say, yeah, I noticed it first. This is a problem. Mm-hmm. But he didn't do that. He actually went back to that brother and made it like it was me. It was all made like it was me. And this was something that I was bugging about. I, I just talked to him recently. We was arguing over the phone. He even tried to make insinuate that I said that he was taking money. Like the, the, the brother who, mm-hmm. who brought it to my attention. I never said he was taking money. I never said he was taking money. I have no evidence of him taking money. The only reason the thing about money happened is because of that brother, right? Right. That was kind of like the decline from there of me feeling the way about him because it's like the same way, like I told you when we was kids, we don't notice. I'm having that conversation with Dre and Fred. Like, we kids, we don't notice what's going on, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, but then we get older, our eyes open up. It's, I start to open my eyes to him, and I start seeing like, oh, you don't have a good character. You are... You are an agent of chaos. You are a person who likes to see drama and likes to see things going on, but then you openly express that you don't. And then conversations that me and him not had about other family members start to resonate. Mm-hmm. It's deeper than you just, in the moment, you just venting or whatever, or you feeling the way. Like, this right. is like you being on some messy shit. Right. It's almost like manipulation. Like, I mean, in that situation, I feel like that's what he did. He put that batter in my back and then didn't run with me when I got to running for it. Exactly. So I'm like, you hitting... Y'all, your own brother, your own blood against each other. It was weird. It was weird. And I was like, eh. And then I'm like, for as long as I fought with it, because like, you overthinking. You overthinking. Mm-hmm. That's not the case. You overthinking, T. You overthinking. But I'm not. I'm not overthinking. Because it happened again. Then it happened again. And then it happened again. So now he the F word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, TJ. I meant that it's no, not a slur, right? I didn't mean it as a slur. I didn't mean it as a slur. Okay, I meant it. I, I honestly, God wanted to hurt his feelings because I mean, sound child as he hurt mine. Yeah, I mean, he's fucking disappointed. <laughs> the older brother, like you, look up to really disappointed. I yourself. fucking look up to them. I fucking look up to them. The one that's closest in age to me, I went to the, to a specific. I went to the college where I went because of him. The one after that, my whole demeanor and how I handled myself was because of him. Right. The one after that, I, I took a lot from him. The one that's the, not the oldest, but the second oldest, mm-hmm. I took so much from him. I chose a career path for him. If that motherfucker had told me to go kill somebody, I would have killed somebody. What I thought. If that mm-hmm. motherfucker had told me, "Hey, jump out that building, you'll survive," I would. <laughs> I swear to God. Just and this is as recent as last year. Right. Like, this is not me being some young guy doing, thinking of this, doing mm-hmm. it. I would have done this as recent as last year for him, you know, until you start realizing. Or, not nah, recent as this year, yeah, last year, 2023, for him. But you start realizing, like, oh, the character of a man, who a man is, or whatever. And mm-hmm. then you're like, oh, no, nah, I would have 
glad that never came up for me to do that. But the, even right. the oldest one, I played certain sports because of him. Like, I just, I just fucking, I always sit back and admire them. I like to imagine myself as the, uh, I, I encompassed all of who they are. Like, who I am was, was like, who I am is the combination of all of them. Right. I'm the product of them, and I'm the one who's going to take this baton, and I'm going to keep running, and I'm going to make sure that none of them ever have to work again. That was always my mindset. All right. But I don't feel that way now. You know, Like about none of them or just? Not one. Not one. I don't. I don't. I, I, I love them. But I see that that's all that we'll ever have for each other is just that love, bro. I see. And that's all we're going to ever and we might not even have that. I don't even know if that's real on their end. Because to watch me, to yeah. not call me, like, I don't, you know, and then act like you don't call me. Like, now the one that's closest in age to me, he, he would call me, but I'm so scared to talk on the phone to him, right? Mm -hmm. I'm so scared to have a conversation on the phone with him because everything get twisted. That manipulation shit. Right. It's like, when it come back, it's, Terry O did all of this. Uh, like when he come back and it's, and it's repeated back to me. And I don't know why he chooses to do that, to repeat that shit back to other people because it always come back. That's just the nature of our family. Mm -hmm. Motherfuckers love keeping shit going. Like it's like a fucking never ending episode of Love and Hip Hop. So <laughs> in the sense that you're saying it's like a basically like hearsay shit basically going on. So true enough, they know like need help or they know the situation pertaining to your mom but yet you still don't have no type of support from anybody but they are misconstruing the information they spread amongst each other and they'll still make you look like the villain in, in a sense in a sense and that's a, that's not even just limited to my brothers it's, it's with the other family members as well and they'll try to say he bugging right. he bugging but then you hear it like like I know one of my brothers had a conversation with one of my cousins and he told my cousin that this is the brother who I, I I fucking said that I'll jump off a building for mm -hmm. if he told me to. He don't know that I know this, but and if he, I'm pretty sure he'll watch this because they all gonna share the shit and they all gonna fucking <laughs> chit chat about the shit anyway, which right. I don't give a fuck. Like he'll watch this. He don't know that I know that he had a conversation with my cousin where he said she and Terry don't answer the phone for me, which is just not true because when I call him, I said, "When did I not not answer the phone for you, bro? I always answer the phone for you. Mm -hmm. I always pick up the phone for you. Like when do I not answer the phone for you, nigga? I get." I get butterflies when that nigga call me. Not even on no like weird shit. It's just like, oh, my brother calling. Me. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. That's the way it used to be. Like, cause he never really called that much like that. But I, I get excited when that nigga called me. So when am I not answering the phone for you? Now I kind of like my stomach turn when I see them niggas call, because I know it's not. It's, it's hurtful, bro. I'm not. It's not rooted in nothing. Yeah, and I don't hear any like genuine feelings, like uh, actually even concern for your mom at this point. I think they concern for mom. I won't take that from them, but I just think like. I think they're concerned, but I just think they want to keep hands off. They don't want to touch this situation. Mm -hmm. And it, it, but the thing is, is like, you don't want to touch this situation, but it's left up to me to do it. It's left up to me to do it. And they've both, a lot of them have said, I can't, I can't do it, right? I can't do it. But it would have been damn easy for all of us to get together and just do it, bro. I mean, I just feel like logically they would. Like, I feel like y'all, like I said, I've been knowing y'all for years. I feel like y'all, were close enough to have that conversation and like actually put forth that effort with them, not you. Yeah. Because it's like admirable that you, the youngest brother, took the initiative to go all the way, three and a half hours away to get your mom out of a, a damn near deadly like situation. Yeah, a potentially deadly situation for sure. I think that's, and that was my hope. Like, all right, this again, I'm the, I'm the one, I'm the one to take the baton and go. Like, mm -hmm. all right, my brother's gone. In a sense, bro. Slick, I done this shit, bro, because, not even Slick, I done this shit because I was hearing a lot of mm -hmm. talk about my brothers. I was hearing about, like, with, from aunts and cousins and shit, I was hearing, like, that's their mama, they sitting up letting their mama, blah, right. blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I just didn't want motherfuckers to keep talking about my brothers no more, bro. I didn't want us to seem, like, fucked up no more. Right. Like, I just didn't want that shit. And I thought, like, me, they baby brother, who they... They supposed to love, mm -hmm. you know. They would say, "All right, baby, bro, gotta we gotta step up, y'all. We gotta be present." And shit, that shit hadn't been like that. It hadn't been like that. And it don't seem like it's gonna be like that. And it's weird because there's still some type of sense of like, um, like obligation for like it, it, it's like almost like they feel that I'm still obligated to communicate like my right. my moves, what I'm doing with her with them. It's like, yeah, that's your mama. 
But you, it's not even that you don't deserve to know. It's not your fucking business at this point. Exactly. It's not your business at this point. Only thing you need to know, is she safe? Is she okay? That's all you need to know. If if she's not, I'll communicate that with you. But as far as how I move with her, that's not your business at this point. It'll become your business when you involve in the care of her. Exactly. But but until then, it's not. You know, that's just the reality of it. And I do, I feel, I feel a lot of disdain towards like, you know, like, my aunts as well, mm -hmm. because these are women that I look at as like my mother and stuff like that. Like all of them, I respect them, bro. Like I respect them. We even have a conversation, bro. It blew my mind. Like, bro, I had a conversation with my aunt, bro. And like, and I know this, this is, she wouldn't admit it, but, and he wouldn't either. But I know this is based off a conversation she had with the brother closest to her. It was a preconceived notion of how I was about to come at her. Mm -hmm. Right? How, what, the thing that I was about to say to her, it was a preconceived notion of like how I was going to approach her. Or whatever in this moment or of, of trying to communicate with her and the only question i ask is like why you don't come down here and see me and mom why you don't come and check on us like why i know you done passed through a couple times to come down this way to why you don't come and check on us and shit. right you know but when i hear her tell it back of how she heard it it was almost like she was saying i was trying to confront her i'm like you my damn auntie mm -hmm. she was like and you my damn nephew like aggression like are you, when I say you my damn auntie, I mean like you like a mama to me. Right. Woman. Like I'm not finna sit up here and argue with you and yell at you and do all that with you. I'm not finna take that here with you. Like you my auntie, you like my mama. Mm -hmm. That's no different than me arguing with my mama. And bro, that shit, that shit bother me. But it like it let me know where she's staying, and now I can move accordingly, even with her. You know the whole idea of all of this, bro. Is like it's just like when it's all said and done, when my mama gone, bro. When I'm, when when whatever, when it's all said and done, bro, or even now, they gotta, they can sit up and say whatever they want to right. to people because what I don't realize in this, bro, people not interested in the truth. Mm. People not interested in the truth. People interested in status and how other people look exactly. at exactly the right? image. They look interested in the image, but when it's all said and done, you gotta sit in that fucking house by yourself at night and know that you were dead to fuck wrong exactly. and all of this shit. You know, you got to deal with that. But it's like, it's crazy. Like, the fact that none of them even offered to take the initiative, like, take your mommy and basically leave you alone in this whole situation. And the killer part is, like, the brother close to you being, like, the manipulation, like, from family member to family member. Just talking. Yeah. Saying shit that don't need to be said when in actuality, like, and I, I'll just get real disrespectful for them. Like, cause, because it's, it's, it's more to it, right? And it's just, we'll be here all day explaining like the piece by piece, the layers mm -hmm. of where he go to like communicate with this one and say this to this and that come back to me. Communicate with this one, say this to that one, and that come mm -hmm. back to me. But then come back to me and it's like the level of what he done done. It. And I know a lot of that shit sometimes when it come back to me is like inflated. Mm -hmm. But I know some of that shit is like real, real though. Like, it's like, but the fact that you having these types of conversations, but then he'll say, you've been having the same conversations too. It's like, tell me. At one point, I don't have these conversations. Right. I don't even talk to them like that. Like, how can, on one hand, everybody's saying I'm not answering the fucking phone. <laughs> exactly. But on the other hand, I'm having conversations with, with everybody. <laughs> Come on, bro. It makes no sense, bro. And I, I just. <sighs> it's just weird. Because, like, how are you literally, like, the villain after being the most selfless person because that's what that's what they do, TJ. That's what these motherfuckers do. Like, and when I say these motherfuckers, I mean human beings. That's what they do. It's like you the hero. If you if you a hero long enough, you you'll be a hero long enough to become a villain, bro. Mm -hmm. Just be a hero long enough, you'll become a villain eventually. That's just the reality of how this shit work, bro. All right, I ain't, bro. I don't I don't care though. But I, I listen, listen. I always rooted for the villain, TJ. I'm serious. When I see Joker and Batman, right? I'm talking about like movie villains. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, Batman caught this motherfucker again. Like, why he didn't do this different? Right. He almost got away with it. I always rooted for the villain. Not not for some strange sadistic type of reason. It's just like the villain is normally manifested through pain. And I can associate with pain. Mm -hmm. I can associate with people feeling pain, right? And I rooted for the villain in those moments because it's why can't the nigga who hurt and win for once? Right. 
right? And with all that being said, I'm going to get them motherfuckers that villain that they want. That's who I am now. I'm going to get them that. I'm going to get them that. And it's like, you're going to you're gonna have to do one of three things. Either shut the fuck up, smack me when you see me, or let's kill each other. I mean, do you think that's like a logical, like, play out in this audit like all this or do you just none think- of this shit is rooted in logic though none of this shit is rooted in logic that's why i completely go with logical in these moments about this shit so it's not mean- rooted in logic i tried to approach all of this from a logical standpoint it's not rooted in logic the only thing that i can deduce from all of this is just that everybody shut the fuck up and you can still do your talking mm-hmm. just if i separate myself from that if i separate myself from the ability to even hear what you done said at that moment it's Meaning, when somebody open their mouth to say, well, so-and-so, I don't want to hear it. I don't care. Exactly. It don't matter. Like, it don't matter. Like, if I can separate myself from that, you know, I'm, I'm good. But I hurt, bro. I hurt, too. Yeah, I hear, I hear it in your voice. So, I mean, it's making me wonder even if there's going to be even type, like, any type of reconciliation. If, like, For it's me, like saying worst come to worst with your mom. It's like. Like, if my mother died, bro. If anything would have happened to my mother, like, I'm going to tell you something. It was, it was Roscoe was telling me about one of his partners, like, his name Doc, I think is what he called him. And he couldn't understand why Doc don't fuck with his brothers or whatever. And he one day he was just telling him, like, bro, why you don't fuck with your brother? He said, well, because, bro, uh, while my mother was going through what she was going through, like, them niggas weren't there for me, and they didn't help. Essentially, the situation I'm going through right, right. now. Um, Like, as far as reconciliation, like, I don't think so, bro. Like, I got my family now. I got a little Maverick, you know? Mm-hmm. But, like, family ain't. Do I love them? Yeah, I love them niggas. I love them, but I ain't going to never forget this shit. This shit going to always bother me. And they ain't going to be man enough to sit down and have a real conversation of accountability with me. All right. It's not going to be no conversation of accountability. They're going to approach the conversation as if I did something wrong. Even this right here, us having this conversation. It's going to be you putting the family business under you, whatever, whatever, so on and so forth. One of my brothers told me, yeah, you the one did a podcast talking about caring for your mama, Cloud Jason. Like, my podcast is my life. Of course, I'm going to sit down and have a conversation about it, bro. I hurt, bro. I hurt. I hurt. I hurt, bro. All right. Like, for real, bro. Like, you don't know, bro. Like, I hurt. Like, like it, but, it, but it ain't got nothing to do with it. It ain't, it ain't the sleepless nights. It ain't the sleepless night, bro. It ain't, it ain't the fucking... Uh, having to watch my mother deteriorate before my very eyes. It's the idea that I don't have the motherfuckers who I always admired and loved the most. Like, I don't have them right here with me, fighting this battle with me. I'm fighting this bitch by myself. All right, and you always told me, like, your brother was like your superhero. He was my hero, bro. For real. And it's disappointing that you ain't even got him. Yeah. And that's what killed me the most. But, you know, shit. What they say, and you got beef in the crowd because, like, it's really fucked up. Because, like, um, like I said, so you see, you being so close to your family, and it's heartbreaking. Like, yeah. you already dealing with your mama not knowing you, like, on a daily basis, and like, you literally just sitting here, like, struggling so, so bad and so hard, bro. And like, it hurt me because I do. I feel like I try to check on you, like, like hard as I can. Like, I tell my friends today, I say I check, I check on Terry often, just because. I know he ain't got nobody, and he really up here, like, literally by himself. So I said, I literally try, because I don't want to lose no good friend. I said, Terry, got my back more than people I know. Like, my whole, like, some of my family, material got my back harder than anybody. And I said, break my heart every day that I cannot help him like I like he need. So I said, he got so much shit going on. Like, you saying you losing jobs, man. Like, I know how hard you work for everything. and it, You don't deserve none of this shit. You yeah. don't. So it really like like fuck with me bad that you try your hardest like to be like the best dad like the best son like I, I commend you man you deserve every flower on this earth man because I I just I, I can't even believe that your family is like let you just suffer and talk, like talking so negatively about you and that's supposed to be your blood so I just it just it's like baffling to me and I, I hate that you going through this shit for real yeah yeah yeah. You know, I appreciate that, bro. I, I appreciate you checking in on me and shit. I always like, I appreciate you, you know, tapping in with me the way you do. That shit mean a lot to me because, you know, like I don't even get that from them. My heroes, I don't get it from them. And when it come to me and my family, bro, it's just like, like 
my own father. It's just been constant disappointment after disappointment with me and for me. So it'd be like, you know, I'm telling my brother this, like, bro, like, but it's like them niggas can't even wrap their head around that shit and see. And it done got to a point to where I'm just, I'm numb to them. Like, I just, I, I won't say that I hate them, but I just, I just love them. And then shit, shit ain't gonna never be the same. It ain't gonna be high in vision. Like, and I do, bro, I work hard for this shit. Like, all of this shit, bro, it's like, but I appreciate you, though, for real, though. Know? I appreciate you always checking in on me. That shit mean more than you know. And I be hating sometimes. Like, I can't be, like, when you be sick and shit. Like, when you was sick and shit, like, I was trying to, like, call and check on your shit. But it's like, sometimes I be so suffocated with my own shit, bro. It's like, I wish I could be more of a, I can't, I can't be the friend I need to be the motherfuckers. I can't be the father I need to be the maverick at time. I can't even be the son I need to be to my mother because right. there's so much shit on balancing, bro. There's so much shit on balancing, man. It fuck with me, but you know, what do you do? Man. What can you do? <laughs> you can't do shit. You just gotta accept that shit. Yeah, I'm praying for you daily. I mean, I hope. I mean, it's some type of resolution that you get the help or the support that you really can get and that you deserve, man. Because you need a break. You need like that mental break, that spiritual. You need to, like get like grow back in your faith, and, like just understand like all oh, this stuff gonna work out. Your favorite in. Yeah. Yeah. I I I believe though. I believe like all of this shit happening for a reason, bro. I really do. I believe all of it happening for a reason. And I don't like stood the test, you know, but I am at a place now where I'm just like, I kinda I, I choose me. Right. I choose me. I choose like myself. Like <laughs> it's crazy. It'd be called a narcissist. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just, you know, that's crazy to be called a narcissist, like, but at the same time, like, I done done some of the most selfless shit, like, in this moment, and I'm still gonna choose me, but I love that woman, though. Yeah. I love that woman. Most like, definitely. That woman mine, like, I love her, bro. Like, I love her more than she fucking know, and she get on my fucking nerves, <laughs> bro. But I love that woman more than she know, and I told her when it was just me and her in the house, you know, I was like, probably like, 12 at the time or some shit like that. I told her, like, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to be there for you. And she told me, ah, right, you're going to just be, you're going to be like all the rest of these niggas in my life. That's exactly what she told me. But I said, nah, I'm going to take care of you. And shit, I had to live on that promise. <laughs> so, you know, I had to live on that promise. But I'm going to always stand by and make sure she she decent. I just got to, I just got to figure this shit out. But that's what, I'm up at night. Do a call me sometime, like, fucking... He be on the road two, three in the morning. Be like, what's, what's up, bro? Why are you still up? It's just like, bro, I'm just up here fine trying to figure it out, bro. Man, <laughs> Doing push-ups and reading <laughs> books and checking out podcasts, trying to see if I be meditating, trying to see if I can untap some shit, like some right. deep for knowledge or something of self. <laughs> that shit don't be working. I still wake up confused as hell, like not knowing what the fuck going on. You know, even now as we shoot this show, I done heard in her scooting around. There's some shit going on. I'm going to go out there to some bullshit. <laughs> I ain't lying, like some fucking piss on the floor or fucking <laughs> a knife head or something. I'm gonna go out there to some bullshit. You know, that's my baby. I'm gonna stick beside her. <laughs> I'm gonna stick beside her, bro. You know, but hopefully the motherfuckers will watch this shit and see something, but they probably won't. They'll probably be offended. And if so, if you only if you offended, fuck you. I don't care. I don't care. Like, I'm to that point now. It's like, Fuck it. Yeah. Let's just, let's just see each other then. Like, let's just fucking beat each other up. <laughs> like, that's where I'm at now. It ain't even worth it. I promise. You. I know it ain't, but it's like, you know, and I ain't, I, sh I just got to handle it that way. Like, that's all I know, bro. Like, that's all I know. Like, yeah. <laughs> everybody who know me know, like, it's like, if you, if you offended, you feel let's just beat each other up. Like, because it's like, you can't talk logically in this situation because nobody wants to take accountability. All right. Nobody wants to take accountability for their lack of action. Everybody, you know, it's, I I did this. I did this little thing, so I did enough. Right. You know, and it's things, like I said, like I told you, throughout it, it's been little small things here and there, but not nearly what I needed, though. Right. You know, like not nearly what I needed, but fuck it. It's my life. <laughs> I'm going to live it. The show going to keep going. If you're watching up until this point, man, hey, we love you. We appreciate you. Make sure you go get the merch. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share this. 
Share this shit. <laughs> share this shit. Share it, share it, share it, you know, because I'm doing it for the class. <laughs> That's the crazy part. Good nar- was, them narcissists do it for the class. Narcissists do it for the class. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous, bro. I never get, I never fucking understand this shit. Like, never mind the fact that this is my real actual life. You exactly. Know? And I should have said names. I said no names in this. You notice I didn't. Please I did that on purpose. Please bro. Don't. I said, I'm not going to say their names. I'm not going to say their names. <laughs> I'm going to make motherfucker wonder, <laughs> you know. But if you're watching up until this point, we appreciate you, man. Look, go get the merch. Go get the merch. Listen, this is a Chop Tea podcast. We'll get real. Bro, authentic conversation. Until next time.